uh, he doesn't get to override people's thoughts and, and opinions on stuff because ultimately what we're, <laughs> what we're, trying, what we're trying to do is, is build a strategy that makes sense for the brand overall. And so to start building that strategy, I wanna make sure that everybody's on the same page. Because if we're not on the same page, it's really challenging to, like, you know, a, a crew is always rowing in the same direction, but if one person has their oar in the wa water and, it's, and they're rowing opposite, you're just gonna spin. And that same thing happens when you're, when you're building brand marketing strategies and, and brand strategies for outreach. So I wanna make sure everybody's on the same page. So if I could, um, I wanna go around the room. Obviously, I understand who you are and what you do, but I want some depth from each of you so to understand what you do, what your role is in the organization, and that would help me for some context. What's the one, <laughs> what's the one thing that drives you nuts and if it could stop tomorrow, it would stop? Um, it, again, it's probably just the way my brain works. Um, I, if there's a task or a project or something, I am always gonna get it done. I'm always gonna get it done on time. I feel like a lot of the um, leaders in our company, do they just don't work like that. So okay. I'm, I'm constantly, Andy, did you do this? Will, did you do this? And and the babysitting role So you feel like, like you have to check in a lot. Drives me nuts. Okay. Because I'd rather go do my shit and know that you're gonna do your shit. Got it, I like that. <laughs> so, Early on, early on, hear that. That's important because that helps. Um, in, and I, I am the person in my company that everybody has to, hey, is that done? Is that done? Is that done? But because I'm juggling a lot of balls. And if you're juggling a lot of balls, that happens. So um, thank you. That was awesome. Yep. All right. Your turn. <laughs> they kind of forewarned me before I got hired in the interview process so that they had something to fall back on. Like, we kind of told you. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I... I think I deal with it fairly well when I understand the vision because I can fill in the gaps. So I'm very similar to Andrea in that I'm very process oriented. So when, like for instance, if he says, um, I have a vision and this is it, I see it in my mind as a series of like steps to get there. So okay. immediately uh, a bullet point list starts populating in my head of things to make that happen. Okay. So you're definitely a process-driven person. Um, what what motivates you? Like what ex like what? Everybody's got a different thing, right? Some people are motivated by money. Some people are motivated by growth. Some people want position and title. What motivates you personally? Watching people finish what they started. So okay. if they if someone has a goal and watching that goal go from idea to vision to implementation to success. Um, I don't need to really do anything else but just know that I was in some way a part of that and I feel ownership over it, okay. so I feel pride. Achievement. <laughs> Achievement is important then. Yes. Okay, super cool. Uh, if one thing could change tomorrow that drives you nuts, what is that one thing? Andy responding faster to emails. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I kid, but not really. But not really. No, no, no. I get it. Okay, cool. Will, you're up. I think my brain is wired more like Andy's. Uh, I'm, I love big ideas and you know, figuring out ways to get there. Just here's the end goal, let's fucking crush it. But I have a hard time staying on task. So um, yeah, that's, that's, that's a little bit of a... Are you, do you have ADD? Oh uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't take and I don't take medication. Neither do I, that's okay. <laughs> I, I, I reckon when people say they have a hard time staying on task, that typically I, I relate to that because I have a hard time staying on task unless it's something I'm deeply interested in being on. Yeah. And so like yesterday, I got really into the production side of our podcast open and I got stuck there because it's like, that's, you get into that space. So when you're in that space, you, you're good, but when you're outside of that space, you kind of, your focus will drift. Yeah, okay. I've never been great at multitasking and I do a lot of multitasking, so I'm getting better at it. But yeah, if I can focus on one thing, there, there's an interesting article on multitasking. I'll find it um, that I'll share with you. It's actually impossible for humans to multitask. We, we actually think we're multitasking because we have 16 things going, but we're actually segmented. Our thinking is very segmented. We can only work on one task at a time, which is why when you're in the middle of having a conversation and your phone does this, you immediately 
stop talking because your brain can't do two things at once. Um, so it's, uh, I feel you. What, what, what fires you up? What is your yeah, so motivation? What always has been my motivation is just helping people reach their goals. You know, uh, I always thought the best way to get what I want is to help people get what they want or teach people how to get what they want. And that's pretty much exactly what I'm doing here. Um, you know, coaching people to be better using my knowledge that I've you know, gained over the years to help people uh, achieve their own goals. So um, I love that. Yeah, then that's a great, that's right out of the Zig Ziglar playbook and it's a smart way to go. Uh, what frustrates you? Um, micromanagement in general. So either me being micromanaged or me having to micromanage. Okay. Uh, I think that's the most frustrating thing to me in general. Are, are either of them happening at high rates? Um, so they don't, mic the you know, leaders here don't micromanage me. I feel like I have to babysit uh, the sales reps okay. quite a bit right now. And I didn't specifically ask you the question, what fires you up? I'm going to bounce back to you because I neglected to ask you that. Um, I, I, I kind of share a similar thing with Will, and I haven't gotten to do it lately. We, at, at one time, we had a bunch of um, girls that were working here, and like I would come home just over the moon excited because I would kind of get to do like a mentoring session with them. And that, to me, that I mean, so fulfilling. I absolutely love doing that. We are in a big transition phase right now, and I have not had anyone to kind of even do that with, or just, yeah, it's been, we've shifted a lot, so I miss that. Um, but that, that gets me excited, um, and a lot, like Will said, like, all the years of knowledge, like, every time we do an interview, I'm like, we have so much we can offer you, like, we have so much to teach you, and they seem to want to learn, but then you get to the day-to-day, -day and it just, it's, you get back to work. You right, you get in the out. yeah, you get in the trench and yeah. you're like. But I love doing that. Cool, and I'm sorry I missed that on the first no, round. Okay. All right, Andy, you're up. This is it's your turn now. Take notes on myself, or just notes when I get this. Just <laughs> Take notes on yourself. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's start with where you're at, what fires you up, and let's kind of talk about the the day to day. Yeah, uh, what fires me up. I think I'm, I'm to the point now, I, I, I was asked this question recently on a golf course, like why am, I, why am I doing what I'm doing right now? Like is it ego, is it money? Like what's, what's pushing me to do this? And really, I just want to fucking prove to myself that I can fucking do it. I'm curious, do you have a chip on your shoulder that you have to prove? <laughs> I'm just curious. I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> I'm, that just it, when I when you're mission driven like that, when you have to prove something, I just I tend to find it's, that it's people. Like to myself, though. You have like, to. It, it's, uh, I'm not. I I tell everybody in my office like the, my money on every everything is at the last cell in the spreadsheet, right? Like, I'm not. I'm really not money driven. I don't know how much money is in the bank right now. I don't know how much money I have on the board. I don't know. Like I, I have to report those to people, and, and I have to get them reported to me, but they don't drive what I'm trying to do. What frustrates you in the in the structure of the, your organization? Like, what's killing you right now? Right now, you know, so we have um, the accountability chart's been growing and growing and growing. We have the management positions, the, the leadership positions dialed in, and we just kind of keep getting kicked um, with uh, some losses on like positions we thought we had something rock and roll, and it's just like we take a step, step forward and a couple steps back. Um, and I feel like we're just I feel like we're just this close to like getting over that, or we're off and running. Um, but every time we get kicked, it takes that, that this close to like this close. And so we're right here and, you know, we're just, we're, we, I keep pushing, you know, I know we're, I know we're going to get there, but we're just kind of in this little black hole of like, we need to, we need to press this, this view because we can rock and roll from here. Right. Um, so it's just a matter of getting out of this little, this little valley we're in. So if, um, and, and that one step forward, two step back is very common, especially when you're, you're in that growth cycle. I mean, you shared with me in our first meeting you have very ambitious goals for where you want to take this. Does everyone on the team know, or is everyone on the team aligned with what the goal and mission is of the company? Or do you believe that they are? I, I think the, I know the leadership team is. Um, you know, it, it's, we've had so much transition on the, on the, on the sales side. Okay. Um, that it's, 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 been, it's been something that's been a challenge to kind of to, to keep that uh, vision and culture present because you know, it's like we're out hustling, trying to bring in new people, we're paying them off for systems and processes. Um, and so, you know, probably not, probably not all the way down where it needs to be. Okay. If, Will, if I were to ask you what, what the, what, what does this company do? What, what business are you in? How would you describe that? Real estate investments. So, like right now, we're wholesaling. 
showing, but you also do flips, you also do rentals, uh, kind of whatever makes sense at the time. So what that means is we help sellers solve their problems and uh, connect the dots between sellers and investors. So um, you know, we're the middleman essentially in, in the wholesale transaction, solve okay. people's problems, and we offer a, a solution for uh, investors as well. Okay, same question. What business are you in? Yeah, whenever people ask me what I do, I, I say I work um, with a real estate investment company, and we seek out distressed sellers um, or properties, you know, that have, they're not going to be a good fit for a retail sale. We find those distressed sellers and properties and um, help solve their problems, and then we match, I say, match them up with an investor who is also seeking to, you know, do either a fix and flip or buy and hold some type of real estate investment. Okay. Same question. Track to Sunny, whose is very similar. Um, I've gotten asked that a lot since I just started um, fairly recently, and I just say uh, real estate matchmaking. Um, we try to make a perfect match every time um, with older homes or homes that are not seen as ideal um, but will be ideal, and we just need to match the vision with the money. Okay. That's a vision with the money. <laughs> Andy, what would you? How would you describe? what you do? Yeah, I mean, we're a real estate investment company, so we're, we're out driving uh, opportunities for ourselves and other investors. Um, you know, we have the ability to, to, to pick the deals we want to do and run ourselves and the ones we don't. Um, the, uh, I think the, one of the questions that I think is critical is to, to really look at not just the business that you're in, but what business are you really in? And, and, uh, and the example of this is, so when I attended Tony Robbins Business Mastery and that question was asked, what business are you in? Well, depending on which company I'm talking about, specifically ad zombies, we're a copywriting service, right? If you look at our business from a, from a 50,000 foot view, we're a copywriting service, but that's not the business we're really in. The business we're really in is we write words that sell anything, right? It's, it's differentiator. It's very easy to say, oh, we're a copywriting service, but what does that mean to somebody? But when I can tell people we write words that sell anything, that's a very clear differentiation point of what business are we really in? This is what we do. And I think having a unified message is going to be very helpful for the team as a whole because you shouldn't all have an interpretation of what the business is. You should all know what the business is and be able to articulate it in a way that is so crystal clear because that really helps drive your messaging, your branding, everything about your marketing is gonna be driven by that one factor. What business are you really in? So I think part of what we need to do is, is spend some time today really digging into that. Uh, and that would be critical because once this room has that, then as people come in, that gets ingrained and, and people know what it is and it's very easy for them to quickly when they meet someone in a room at a conference or they're at, at a you know meeting well, what do you guys do and it's almost verbatim for everyone and 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 it so clearly articulates what you do in a way that people go oh crap that's cool right I understand it that's I think that's vital because otherwise your your interpretation wasn't wrong but it was your interpretation and your interpretation wasn't wrong but it's your interpretation. But if everybody's on the same page, that's gonna be super helpful uh, for the team as a whole. So what we wanna do is make sure that all of the marketing, everything that we're focusing on stays ahead of trend, but that you're not the pioneer in the space. Pioneers are the, in the worst position because pioneers are the ones that get the arrows. And so, but if you can be ahead of it, but not the pioneer, let someone else get shot, right? Um, but st think about yeah, it, I'm right there. <laughs> you know, because the reality is, is that if you're, yeah, I've had enough arrows. Thank you. <laughs> and that, and and I think that's. But that's a huge challenge because you you want to be the leader in that space, but, you know, I wasn't the the first person to come up with the idea of building the company that I built. I was probably second in, but I saw the mistakes that they made and did it better and now they're gone. And so you don't want to be a pioneer. 
let, let, let the market kind of settle, but your, your eyes are on the ball constantly. Um, I think one of the things that's going to be interesting over the next, let's call it 18 to 24 months, is seeing where people go in terms of housing when jobs shift. When, when there's an economic downturn, jobs are going to go away too. How many jobs are going to go away? Where are those jobs going to dissipate? That's a big question. Are they going to go away in the high paying tech sectors? Are they going to go away in l low wage? Probably not. This is the second ad we did. So who shot this? Uh, Patrick Graham. It's great. I okay. Great. I look forward to working with you. Everybody's got a dick tattoo. Boys, I guess we just got another one. Like, you rock star. Killing it, bro. I'm going to work my usual marketing magic for this client. You mean take some pictures with your phone and put it on the MLS? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Marketing magic at unicorns? Two things that don't exist. Just let us buy your house. We are the District Phoenix. <laughs> Realtors fucking hate us. And I love it. This is actually one of our really good friends. And he was my friend. I love it. This is Scott. Oh, hi. I'm actually uh, sitting down with some potential buyers for your house right now. Yes. Oh, they love it. Absolutely love it. Can I give you a call back later? All right, thank you. Bye. Scott's a liar. Let us buy your house. <laughs> we are the District Phoenix. <laughs> so we're fighting through uh, Facebook's phone. I'm getting reported by fucking realtors, I'm sure, which is why they're hitting yeah. me. Yeah. Well, I'm getting shit on my broker's calling me. Like, Facebook's shutting me down. It's like, all right, guys. And we're getting leads. So, so, so there's an easy way to fix that. All you got to do is bleep it. Don't even get the word mother, so there's no inference of motherfucker. Yeah. Just bleep it right before he even says mother, and that ad can run as is. And realtors are going to complain about it, but there's nothing. You can't infer based on a bleep, mm -hmm. but as soon as you have the word mother and the bleep, yeah. there's an inference of motherfucker in the ad, which is what's setting them off because they can come after you for that. And just have that bleep cover up the entirety of the word, and that will fix the problem. And Facebook can't really argue with that. So I've been running Facebook ads for years, have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on the platform, and what happens is, is that when you look at your phone, here, this is the time everybody can pick up their phones, um, and you go to Facebook, you will notice something that as you're scanning or scrolling through Facebook, here's an ad, right? So, or here's a post, right? That's, that's yep. horizontal. Mm -hmm. But look at my ad, which comes up next. Do you notice the amount of yeah. real estate yeah. Yeah, it eats yeah. up? So the visual real estate of horizontal, that's what your video looks like right now, oh, versus. versus the real estate I take up. So you're owning a way, way bigger real estate yeah. space on the page. And since you guys are all about real estate, you want to own that real estate, yeah, and real estate no, you no, you can't. <laughs> um, so that's that's why you want to go square. And people, and the, so the other part is they convert better, and they convert better because they grab your attention better because they eat up that much more real estate. When you present that on a on a TV or on a widescreen, it still eats up more space than the vertical uh, than the horizontal because it needs a bigger box to yeah. fill the 1080 by 1080. So it literally gives you a larger area, so you dominate the newsfeed. And that's why you want to have this square. Smart. <laughs> no, just experience. To me, like, if, if, like all right, if I, if, I, if, I was to say, if I was to say that watch, how much you pay for it? Uh, let's call it $200, I don't all remember. All right, so if I had that same watch and I'm like, hey, does anyone want to buy this watch for 100 bucks? Yeah. I'm going to find buyers stuff in this room, right? Pretty oh, easy, yeah. right? So yeah. I got a good deal, I'm going to find a buyer for it. Finding that watch for $70 so I can sell it for 100 is going to be a little bit of a challenge. Problem. Yeah. So this is always, this is always the, the number one focus for us on how to get more of this opportunity because mm -hmm. this will fall into line. All right, so, so what I'd like to do is, is break each of these down a little further because that helps us understand who these people are, because the messaging, and by the way, there's no messaging that's right for one person. And I'll give you an example of this. You wake up in the morning and you had a bad night, you're pissed at your friend, and none of the ads appeal to you, long or short. 
you and your husband have a disagreement about something or you had an amazing night, let's go the other way, right? Your patience is way deeper. So suddenly somebody serves you an ad that's a, a, a narrative. You'll read the entire thing. People don't, there's no default for what works for one person and it won't work for them the next day. It, there's no default because, and it's not an algorithm that can decide this, it's, it's the human, right? It can't determine that I had a shitty day yesterday because my son flooded the house, right? It can't figure out that your cat died and you had a bad day or that your son was accepted into this college or that college, right? So it doesn't know. So your mood is gonna determine how you receive a message. And let's start listing out what are some of the, re what, what makes a house an undesirable house that somebody would wanna offload and how many of those houses are actually available in existence around? Outdated functionality, what, what are the reasons in the um, undesirable? Is it inherited? The, the death or the, yeah. you know, the, the uh, like a surviving spouse. Like a probate type situation. Um, okay. So this is like right. confusing legal shit and like messy paperwork, and this is the feelings, 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 yeah. but no messy paperwork. We're all microwave society. Remember when a microwave used to be fast, like a, a potato in two minutes? You were like, oh my God, now you're standing there going, God, faster. I need 30 more seconds. Right? But, cool but, it, but you think about it, our, but our attention span has gotten so much shorter. But I think part of that is, it's a combination of things. It's, yes, it's technology, it's connectedness. It's why we, you know, when there's a, a war breaks out, we hear about it instantly. We usually see it on our phones first. Like there's that level of connectedness, so we are very impatient. So we do want that fast, convenient, everything's. But the reality is, is that time is, like as I've gotten older, time is way more valuable for me mm -hmm. than money. Yeah, when we staged our condo, I remember being like, oh, that's kind of a real pain in the ass. Like, right, so, so think about that, in the, and I, I always look at that from the consumer's perspective. What, what's gonna motivate that person to make that call, to click that link? To, because you can't assume that you know what the, what the motivation is for that person. Again, they had a really great morning, they're gonna click something that they wouldn't have clicked yesterday. You, you, you gotta like almost create an episode called Raw Estate, and it's about the raw, raw estate. ooh, Raw Estate, there you go. <laughs> raw Estate, it's, um, that's why they pay me the mediocre bucks. Yeah. Um, raw Estate, because here's the thing, to Megan's point, I know that my wife will tell you, and anyone that walks through our front door, that our kitchen remodel was $25,000. Bullshit, it was 40. How much did you guys spend on extra takeout? How much did you guys spend Oh my on god. How much did it, you guys spend in like life was being disrupted? Correct. That would never have happened except as a result. So you have to you have to also be able to turn off the the real estate side of you and just think about the consumer side of you, right? We're all consumers. How much how many of you spend on Amazon every day, right? A package a day at least. I mean, Amazon is like crack. But but we're all consumers, so you have I love them. I love them. Um, they make my life so much better. And because I don't have to go to the store. I have an idea at three in the morning and I want to get something. I can find it on Amazon. All my shit's out there on the internet for a reason. If people have a question and they Google search me, they're going to find everything out there. There's no question about who they're working with and the company, right? That's important. And so that, his brand reputation carries into the district's business and brand reputation. So building you up as the authority in this space is critical because it will, it will get you fast wins, but it'll also give you long-term legacy. Yeah. And, and the long-term play is that the, the district grows beyond you, beyond what you're doing today. It becomes the place that people go, oh, those are the guys. Le have we ever done, uh, we, the people in this room, done a, a real, let's get back to this real raw estate. Have we done a comparison of, if you have this home today and to get it market ready, you need to put this dollar, this money into, that money into, have you created content around that yes. to show where is that content and to... Yeah, it's in that, the back of that playbook. Which never gets used. Because what that does is when, when, when a realtor 
because you can literally face realtors in content and say, realtors say that we're predatory. No, what we're doing is, is we're hurting their business. Why are we hurting their business? And now you can say, here's the breakdown. A realtor charges X percent, and here's the front end, the back end, right? Here's where all the, the, the pain points are of, of transacting with a realtor, plus to get the house ready, here's what you need to do. So really do that full expense breakdown. And so do you really get more money going direct with the realtor versus the lack of hassle, the convenience, the ease of working with us? Because to me, that content shuts realtors down so fast. And what it does is it exposes them as the opportunistic assholes in the, in the conversation. The combination of UGC, yeah. user generated content, yeah. and stuff that you produce, super valuable. If you can get UGC from your clients all after you the fact, ask, right? yeah. all you have to do is ask. Yeah. The worst they can say is no. At yeah. the same time, this piece still doesn't have the blanks filled in. You've got to pre fill the blanks. And those blanks are creating a piece of content around the actual cost of getting the home to sale in the, in the traditional real estate space versus working with you guys. And because, go ahead, because, because the reality is, is that, oh yeah, we back and forth all the time. This, this is awesome, but I still can't feel the impact. And even writing the numbers, I can't feel the impact. But when you show it to me, when I look at that and almost like an HGTV show, you see the, Kitchen remodel, the bathroom remodel, total money in, the real estate fees. Now you're going, okay, so at the end of this transaction, instead of having $400,000, I'm really only getting $290,000 versus selling it to you guys. I'm going to get three twenty. dollars If we can shift the narrative to that consumers would rather do this than that, that's your biggest win. Because once that happens, when that shift occurs, and that shift is very easy to gain traction in just by creating the content, on the, on the brand side, what I would rather see you do is rather than approach it from, hey, let's try to build these relationships, become the authority, and they start seeking you out. See, to me, that shifts the whole game because when you become the authority, when your voice is dominant in the market, suddenly people are coming to you for those relationships because there's more value in them attaching themselves to you than you attaching yourself sure. to them. Honestly, like the, the, that authority piece is something that I've been like trying to struggle with on how to present it, how to do it. And like, I'm more fired up and ready to fucking take that part over more than any time ever in my life. I just need direction on where to push it. I can help you with direction. That's the, that's the easiest part. It, it's, it's not a matter of getting perfection in that space. That's actually easier to do than the, than the marketing side, right? This is brand. That's marketing. Marketing is all the messaging that associates with your ads and, and so, or excuse me, advertising, not marketing. This is all marketing and brand. So the podcast is marketing and brand. It's not asking for a transaction. It's building awareness and education. But you can do that very fast. I mean, I literally did that in, I took a company from zero to a seven figure business like overnight. There's, there's a real value in creating the content for marketing and brand. And, you know, a lot of people look at brand as, well, brand, I don't need to brand myself. Yes, you do, because that brand gives you the authority. That authority gives you value in the marketplace, which is why you want to focus your attention there. Because when that happens, when you do that, your advertising has a way higher efficacy rate. You're, because now those ads are speaking to a brand that has credibility based on all the content in the space that you're floating out there. Right, it, it, it helps the ship rise faster. But if you can distinguish between like what makes sense to come from you, that creates that authority, and I think there's a lot that should come from you. Yeah. And then just still supporting the brand with like some stuff that shows that you guys do great work, because you don't have to go on there and be like, another great flip. Like you're beyond that at this point in your career. But for the brand to show off like how they've helped a neighborhood Correct. get better while also helping someone out of a difficult situation, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and if tomorrow you started doing a replant, revitalize program where when you sell a house, flip a house, whatever it is that you're doing, you're also replanting some of the neighbors, some new flowers and things to help you, you the, the lift that you'll get from doing something as simple as 
spending $30 on plants at Home Depot for this house and $30 on plants for this house, and then talking about, it's a, it's a little tiny thing, mm -hmm. but it makes a huge difference. And, and it plays, Ooh, I, it I, plays yeah, well into the narrative. Go to Moon Valley and say, listen, if we do 100 trees a year with you to start at mature trees, let's work a deal, or I'm gonna co-brand you. Moon Valley, another, you know, another home purchase, another mature tree from Moon Valley Nursery. Right. Yeah, yeah. You, they do the delivery. They do the install. Right. And you can even document a little bit of that. Yeah. And here you are talking to Moon Valley. Yeah, thank you. You're making the neighborhood better. And right. Suddenly you're you're co-branding. You're getting a little bit of the lift from Moon Valley because they're they're a pretty big brand. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, you're giving them love on a local level, which gives them exposure, which right, that's it it all plays well together. It's the circle of life, Simba. Important stuff at meetings. I love this. I'm like a two-year-old. I mean, who doesn't like Pop Rocks? Oh, I really did that explosion. I love these. What we need to get out of this is clarity of messaging so that when someone is out there in the field, oh, what do you guys do? You have an understanding, a differentiation, and something that is so clear that people go, oh, I get it. You're not a fix and flipper. You're not a predatory realtor trying to, you know, take advantage of somebody. You, you need, um, you know, you need, you need some money released up front so you can go get a deposit down on your rental property. Hey, do you need us to go, you know, clean up the carpet in your new place so that you can move in and not have, to, you know, to move twice or cat infested shit because you're down for whatever the situation is, right? Mm -hmm. Like they don't have. The algorithms don't have that, and traditional realtors cannot do that. They don't. They're not the decision maker. They're simply a middleman who deals with another middleman and convolutes the whole transaction. Yeah. Okay. So what you just said is a piece of content that needs to be expanded on. Because that that right there is very high value. We do things. We offer solutions that traditional realtors can't. And a traditional realtor is that six percent. $20,000 yeah. a home realtor. We do something that they can't do. They have zero flexibility and creativity in the process because the only thing they know how to do is stick the sign in the ground, put an ad out, and have an open house. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't get you into the house that you want to get in tomorrow because you don't have the down payment, but you know the equities in this house we can provide the options that they can't, right? So there's, there's a piece of content just there that's really deep, mm -hmm. that can go in five different directions that turns into 30 pieces of content. So that was awesome. Oh, I could see a commercial that's like, all right, we're gonna sell your home, and then the realtor sits back and the homeowner's like, this is amazing. Yeah, yeah. And, then, like, and they're doing the like, fast motion circus. Right. <laughs> Versus, <laughs> versus, <laughs> versus the person saying, uh, you know, they sit at the table and they go, okay, here's your offer. Yeah. Great. What do I have to do to the house? Just sign. Okay. Take what you want and we've got the rest. You're done. Yeah. Right? There's the tr typical transaction, this transaction. Yeah. Sort of like, it makes it really, it, it's, it's why in 30 days, I have become, or 30 days, or however long it's been since I've had my Apple credit card, why I love this card more than any other card I have. It's the convenience. Mm -hmm. This card is tap, swipe, if I, if I don't take tap, I can, but how easy is it for me to pay my bill by just doing one tap and it's paid? Mm -hmm. My statements are all here. I know on any given moment how much credit I have available. I don't have to call an 800 number. I don't have to go online. It shows me right there at all times. I know what I have available and what's on the card, yeah. right? It's become the go-to card for me in less than a month. Mm -hmm. I think that there is a, there's a big differentiation we can create in the marketing messages that come out of this as well because what, what the realtors want to do to you, you can do to them without being an ass. 
because you're going to show how the value leads with what you do versus what they do, which actually diminishes the value of that homeowner's home. And the transaction becomes very transactional, friendly to the realtor, not to the homeowner. So you can totally reverse the message that they're trying to put out there about these guys are predatory, these guys, right? You then control that narrative because everything you produce explains the value without ever taking a shot at them. You don't need to. The consumers will go, why would I want it? Right, what do I need a realtor for? I don't need that. This is a way easier way for me to do it. And I'm gonna get a fair market value and I don't have to do anything to the house. And yeah, it smells like cat piss, that's their problem. (laughs) If every credit card, if every, if every transaction, if every transaction was this effortless, right? We'd all be happy. Look, I, I look how giddy I am about paying my fucking credit card bill. But, but you, you put that same thought process into all the messaging around what you do and how simple it is and how effortless it is and how much value it, it gives the person. How much time does it take you to go online and fill out your credit card thing and pay that, right? And then you have to send it, no. So the convenience of the transaction is what floors me and why somebody didn't come up with this sooner is remarkable. Well, you've got that in in the real estate transaction because you're eliminating all of the headaches associated with the transaction. You've just, you've just made it so that a person can go, beep, done. Like, is, is there one thing that you can key in on that when you talk to clients, that, that stands out, a word that they use regularly? Yeah, worry is a big, we hear that a lot. I don't wanna worry about it. I don't wanna worry yeah. that it won't go through. I don't wanna worry that this will happen. Is it hassle or headaches? What's, what's, what's the more painful, like headaches are painful. Yeah. Hassle? It, it's a hassle, dude. It's a hassle, sorry. It's fucking hassle, how you do it. Right, is it, but is the word. You gotta move, you gotta find new shit. Yeah. Is it the word hassle or headache? What's the word that. Even if, yeah, even if you guys take out as much as you can, moving is still a hassle. Headache is better. Headache, because it's painful. Right, because that's the common pain point. Yeah, the hassle part, yes, but it's a headache. I like the pain of the headache. I don't like the pain of the headache, but I like the pain of the headache and the message because it, it helps people connect a dot. And you go, oh, so without the headache. I just like in your face marketing for certain, some things. I'd get bottles of, find a company, get empty bot, aspirin bottles, get your district brand, the district brand aspirin, and you hand them an empty bottle. What's this? There's no headache. Right? It's just little. <laughs> but, but those are little things that people are going to remember. It's an empty. What's this? It's, it's our aspirin bottle. There's nothing in it. I know because you'll have no headaches with us. Right? It's a totally like it's a little bit campy, but people will they they'll chuckle at it. I like it. Well, it's a great little like. Like, hey. Empty aspirin bottle. <laughs> okay, so I think I think we're I think we're in a good place with the starting point of messaging. Everything you do, everything is video first. That's your that's your top pillar, because from video, you can then use Temi to create the written word, and then you can strip out the audio and you create a special open that, <laughs> right? You got Andrea's buying it, look at this. It is. <laughs> We're in, it's We're in. <laughs> so you start here because that gives you the other two pillars. You then have to just build an open for that and then have someone take, we use Temi to do most of our transcription and Temi's an automated system and it gets 90 to 95% accurate. So use Temi to transcribe, then have a VA that speaks English in pick a country to finish it and make sure it's right. 
the vlog, the content that you put out on the vlog does not need to be a perfect production session every time. It can be as raw as you doing a home walkthrough and having a conversation. You don't have to show the person on camera. If they don't want to be on camera, that's fine. The camera can stay focused on you. And you might get, your camera person might get what's called an over the shoulder of the homeowner where they'll never be identified. But now you take that entire conversation, which maybe took place over a 30 minute period, a 40 minute period, the entire thing, you have them extract the pieces that you know are super sensitive. And that, that piece of video doesn't get edited beyond just taking out the sensitive things. And they never, you know, you just let your camera person know, never show anybody signing paperwork because those, those are private documents. Great, fine. So your camera person is going to know what not to do. And then that piece without editing gets put up on YouTube. That's part of your, that's your content. You can create an open, you can create a close, but that gets put on your YouTube channel. The audio from that goes to Temi to get transcribed. That captioning becomes your podcast. You just do a little front end introduction to it and then make sure it's cleaned up so that it's, it makes sense because Temi's not gonna get it 100%, it'll get it to 90%. Okay. This is gonna really help you. Over the next couple of weeks, you're gonna see what we do with this content and how we use it and repurpose it. That will help you roadmap because you'll go, oh wait, I get it, right? Without revealing any of the stuff that's, that we don't wanna share, right? Just the stuff that we wanna share as a company, as a brand, that will turn into content. Yeah, you, you so here, this is why we start with pillars. So we have the vlog, that's why I'm doing it this way. We have the pod and then we have the blog, which is now the long form written word of both of these, right? This is on the website. This is, so on your website, on um, Anchor, so it gets RSS feed, RSS is real simple syndication to all the podcast outlets, iTunes, Google, name the platforms that are out there that podcast, Spotify, right? So, so you can put it on one, on one program. Anchor. That's one, that's just, it syndicates it out. So my podcast is actually on Anchor, but it's not on Anchor. It's on wherever the consumer is, right? Because I don't get to choose what platform my consumer listens to, watches my content on. I just put it out there and they find it. I have a piece that I just put up, a 41 minute conversation, and I'm sitting literally back and forth on a microphone in, a, in, a, in my studio at the, in the office. That, that's the video content. But here's what happens. In the midst of this four minute content, at two minutes and 10 seconds, Andy says something brilliant, okay? Like a 20 second. I can't, I can't write. This board is just wobbling. Brilliant. <laughs> Like there's a zinger moment. Zinger, right. So now that brilliant zinger starts at two minutes and 10 seconds and it runs 46 seconds. So now that piece of content from the vlog is a video that gets lifted out of that and that gets put on IG. Yeah, see it's wobbling like crazy. LinkedIn, pick the platforms that you want it to go on, Facebook. But this piece of content is a short video version that gets pulled out of this. You don't have to create it, it's already there. Yeah. So you're just lifting it, right? Now, on the podcast side, you take that same piece of audio, you now create an image card with a quote, right? A quote from what you said, so a quote card, like a, basically a 1080 by 1080 graphic. Could have a picture of you, Andy, on it with a quote of the main thing you said, but the audio is there too. And now that's on Instagram, that's on pick the platform. On the blog side, the written word is just the long form that's gonna help with the long form SEO, the content on the website, but that long form can be lifted out for brilliant quotes that go into the quote cards. You know, big money, big restaurant moves, big plays. Like I'm super close with Lauren and there's a lot of great content out of our mm -hmm. conversation. Tying something back to her brand with me gives me credibility, I think, in a certain in a certain vertical, right? Or a certain sure. space, right? And so I'm around a lot of Lauren type people.
like having that camera rolling and being able to capture that, even though it's you, Spanky, popping off some, some, some knowledge, it's still coming from my from my my space as a as a as a expert. Correct. And therefore I can repurpose it and in in a hundred percent. Yeah, so that can there, happen organically and you're just like, hey, are you cool if we film this? And that can also be like, hey, let's uh, and I, and I want to I want to counter something that Megan says. Don't don't ask. Don't say, "Are you cool if we film this?" Say, "We film everything." Oh, sorry. Just inform. Yes. Yeah, we film everything. By the way, make it normal. We'll just yes, we'll just get rid of the. So it becomes the norm that you have a camera person, mm -hmm. because when you do that, then you're not having to search for moments. You're not having to create those moments. You're not having to uh, fictitiously recreate those moments. They just happen. And then when you're done, you can say to camera guy, oh, by the way, that part where I talked about that fucking asshole who runs the state, don't use that. Yeah. Right? Whatever. Or use it. Or use it. <laughs> but, but that, that is that's where the, bad. that's, that's where the value. That's where Yeah, yeah. That's, that's where it comes in. Also, now let's, let's tie this to the district because I think this is where our, I want to tie this. Serial killer handwriting. Go. So, how does this help this? So, when the district posts on social, are you labeled as founder, CEO? Okay, great. <laughs> our founder, our that CEO, awesome. recently, because that's what Ad Zombies does, dot, dot, dot. So when I am around Brendan Burchard, when I'm around Rachel Haas, when I'm with Gary Vaynerchuk, our CEO, Recently spent a day with Gary at VaynerMedia, da 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 da, da. here's some of the things they chatted about. Right, now that content ties back to the brand because, bless you, ties back to the brand because the founder, it's being shared on the brand page. So now the credibility of the brand ties directly into your business. And then occasionally in your content, in your education pieces, in your raw estate podcast, you can actually do some episodes that are isolated episodes that are intentionally done, not, you're sitting down, yes, with the camera, and you're getting this filmed, but you're doing this very intentionally because you want to talk about an issue in the, in the real estate industry that isn't addressed, right? That is where you get the raw estate content from, where you're actually digging into that. And then what will wind up happening is, is as you become more vocal in this space, you'll wind up getting asked to appear at conferences and speak. And I, more gyms come out. Hmm? And then more gyms come out. Yeah. And then it just happens and happens and happens. And I mean like I'm I'm speaking on way bigger stages now than I was two years ago. You know, I'm speaking at on stages that have thousands and thousands of people in the audience now. Not fifty, then a hundred, then five hundred. The audiences grow. Then you take those pieces of content, the safe stuff, right? Not the highly opinionated, the safe stuff. And that becomes reshared content that the district can share yeah. because it's tied to you. And then people are gonna find the other content and go, oh right. wow, this guy's got an opinion. He's like, right? But that's okay, that's not the stuff you're sharing here. That's yeah. the stuff you're sharing here. Yeah, yeah. And they'll see that there's a disconnect. There are things that I would never say under my company brand that I say freely under my brand. It's like we're, like Okay, so for the video, yeah, you need this. You you get a you get a oh a, a person a shredditor, a shooter and editor, okay. Troy's a shredditor. He can shoot. He can edit, right? You get a person who can do both. They then do the main content cut down. They create the the vlog. They can also strip out the audio. Right, Troy, if I said to you, hey, pull the audio from this, how difficult would that be for you to do? Scale of one to 10. Scale of one to 10, a one, okay. So um, if, I, if I asked you to upload that audio to Temi to get transcription, how long would that take you? Not even one minute. So okay. we just need to process it out, find him. How much is What's it gonna take you to leave? Don't. <laughs> I love find this guy. A we'll we'll find a friend. Do, do you have friends? Uh, okay, we'll talk. <laughs> well, You're a true so can we just turn this around? This is going to just become about Troy. Okay. Um, but but now, so you, your your shooter editor, your shredder is going to be able to do these things, and then also create the cut downs for you, right? So you have one person do that. The only thing you need to proof is the transcription from Temi. 
That you can hire an overseas VA so for. So we just need to, we need this process very clean and clear. Right, and that's why you want to create everything. And that's why you want to use yes. Flowster to create a, an SOP, a standard operating procedure, that so that. Check, check, and then we hire. Stuff. Then if we got if we got to get some some students until we get some full time, or whatever, it's like, yeah. hey, this is what you do. Oh, you're good. We're going to keep you. Oh, you got to leave. Going to problem. We'll put some else in until we can get somebody full time that we trust that that can. Yeah, because it's life. not that it needs a ton of judgment. Because you guys all know what got said. It's not like you're doing a script. It's not like you have yeah. a ten thousand dollar shoot that like you can't right. miss. Right. Not take you retake. Like, right. Uh, you know. It just it worked or it didn't, and that was worth saving, and it, or it wasn't. Like, yeah. And in the in the middle of filming, if the camera dies and he needs to change battery or the card gets full, he change. It's no big deal. Yeah, it's uh, right because we're not like we're gonna okay pause while the camera battery gets changed because you don't do that. You just. Yeah. The conversation you don't continues. have like grips and costume designers that are like you're losing five figures. See, and that, you delay. Like, yeah. who fucking cares? and that's the big challenge is people get in their heads like, oh, this has to be a production. This isn't a production. Mm -hmm. no, I mean, so, the um, I think the next thing I want to start doing is is let's let's start talking about the the difference between messaging, the ad messaging, and the marketing and branding of the district because those are two very different. You already have started down a path with your ad messaging with these two very aggressive ads. Is every message you're going to put out there going to be aggressive in terms of advertising by showing the, this is dumb, why use a no. standard realtor? Help me, help me understand where you want to go with this. Paint a, paint a picture for me. Sure. Um, I, honestly, like, we, we, we went back and forth. Like, we, we thought we'd have, like, you know, you know, like one of the things where like Andrea sitting there like, you know, on a, with a glass knob on a door and like just ooh and on about her playing with shelves like the historic, you know, how much we appreciate what's what's in there. Um, you know, we kind of gone through a bunch of iterations of it and then all of a sudden this should be easy fun. You know what I mean? Like, fuck all you guys. You know what yeah. I mean? Top of funnel is a starting point, right? You you can't you can't get the water to the bottom of the funnel until it pours in at the top, but a lot less comes out at the bottom than goes in at the top. So you push it all in at the top, and once it's in at the top, they start to get segmented out inside because you don't know so which- The unicorn and Xbox can really be almost like above this. Right, this could be a real high level top of funnel, and then from there, we'll start to figure out the paths. And we, you're gonna, there's gonna have to be different messages and different follow-up messages. So each of these kind of filter down. And then over time, you're gonna see what, what messages are working, what messages aren't working. And you isolate it so that once they've gone down that path, you can take them down a path where they're only seeing these messages for 15 days. And then if they're not resonating with those messages, we can recycle them back to the, oh. right? And then if after 30 days they're getting nowhere, drop them out. Then they're eligible again to see the top of funnel somewhere down the road. Yeah. Dick Marketer Mode says you take a clip of a Russell Shaw radio ad, my no hassle listing, right? And then you get, you get an ad, you get a piece of an ad from pick the other company um, no, effortless, whatever, with this XYZ I brand or what are they called? I buyer, yes. right? You take a couple pieces of them and say, what the hell does that even mean? No hassle, right? And then you go into a conversation about the hassle. The hassle. Like a, really How can you tell me yeah. it's a no hassle when I got to leave my fucking house every time you want to show it? Yeah. I, I, my I kids can't know. live. Right, my kids can't live and be kids because the oh, we have to make sure that. I have to like hire someone every week. Correct. Like, what the fuck? Oh wait, what? Oh god, did I blow the candles <laughs> out after the last people toured the house? Yeah. Oh shit. Right. So so. Looking through all my crap. But what you're doing, oh what you're doing is without so calling without like calling them out, you're using their own content yeah. to call them out. Because now you're saying, wait a second, and I thought of a secondary clothesline. We make real estate real easy. Work to make homeowners and home sellers and their perspective are not any good. Just stripping them a little bit. What do you guys do? Make real estate real easy. Yeah. What does that mean? What does it mean to you? Yeah. See, this is why, this is why I go through the pro. We craft it, we do how we want. See, it's, it's doing this that uncovers that. Yeah. See, I like this, feels so much better to me. It still is honoring that idea. Making real estate? 
making real estate real easy. Who's the Instagram power user in the team? You're not a heavy IG power user? Instagram? Oh, yeah. Okay. So you're flipping through stuff, hashtagging, liking, commenting regularly? For the most part, yeah. Okay. So you'd probably be really good to post stuff for the brand because you're platform centered. You want to be able to, you've got to know the platform. Like, I, I still stumble through TikTok just because I'm just starting to play in this space. But once you're comfortable on a platform, you can just whiz through stuff. And your posts don't have to be done in platform. You can create them outside of platform and then copy paste them in. So it makes it easy. The content that you're gonna be putting out is connecting people with, I have a need or a potential need. Oh, look at these guys. This is a very unique, different thing. And now they're connecting with a valuable piece of content that helps them connect the dots. If you can help the consumer, whoever that is, connect the dots, it's way easier for them to transact with you because there's no question. They're not gonna second guess themselves. It's the same reason in that article that quoted me about um, hemorrhoids, which I love. I ask this question sometimes when I'm on stage and I, I survey the room to see the average age of the audience to ask the question. I said, if you had a cut on your finger, what would you go to the store and buy to protect the cut? If you had, very good, you get five, five points. <laughs> if you had a cold and we're gonna blow your nose, what would you use? Kleenex. Right, most people go to the brand. If you had hemorrhoids, what would you, get, what would you buy? Kleenex. And that's what everybody answers because they don't know who the second choice is. No. So you create such a high level brand awareness that the content you put out there drives sales because you're not trying to sell them, you're just trying to help them and educate them and give them good, valuable content that matters to them. Are you familiar with HARO, H-A-R-O, help a reporter out? Ooh, yes. Are you, you're not familiar with that? No. Okay, HARO, H-A-R-O, help a reporter out. Now, again, get your head out of Phoenix for a moment because you're gonna, HARO is gonna get you national exposure, which is great for your local exposure. Yeah. Help a reporter out on any given day of the week will list 30 or 40 items that they need an expert on. Oh, and, or and it's all reporters and they're crowdsourcing experts no, in industries. Cool. Yes. And I, let me tell you something, it is a gold mine. You can get a daily digest in the morning and you have hard deadlines for these things because reporters have deadlines. Yeah. And so it's usually first first one to respond that has the right experience and the right expertise, and that's it, they win. And so Haro has helped me over the years get my foot in the door on a bunch of things. And then every month, reporters from around the country submit to Haro, every day they submit, and you will get just the things that you want filtered that are just about real estate, real estate investment, uh, the economy in terms of real estate, right? You can select those things, and then all of a sudden you become their go-to expert. And as soon as you do that, guess what gets to go on your website? As featured on KPMG Radio, as featured on NBC News, as featured on, right? As seen in Forbes, entrepreneur, right? Th right? Those things have high level value. So Andy, you seem a little bit like a bold human being to me. Let's take this a little further. So imagine this is a piece of content and I would change this a little bit, not saying yours is bad, no, just but make it, make it stronger. Mm -hmm. No, your house is not worth what Zillow says it is. Yeah, that'd be and then you can call out the competitor, right? So you're already dispelling this notion. What? Wait a second, but Zillow gives all the home values in the neighborhood. Of course they're accurate, right? You know, my wife said to me the other day, she says, how did that neighbor, like literally around the corner, how did, she's like, how did their home sell for $500,000? They haven't updated their kitchen. They've done no improvements. They don't have a pool. She's like, is it guaranteed that it sold for that much? Or? Yeah, no, it's sold. Okay. So it's reported, it's closed. And so she's like, ours has got to be worth more. We've updated our, but, but it's again to that, everybody thinks their stuff is worth yeah. more. It's what the market will bear.
but, but start with declarative statements rather than questions. The seller's market is about to dry up, right? If you believe that, right? Yeah. What, go with what you believe, not something that's, and then back it up with whatever you're gonna right. put in that piece of content. It feels taggable, it feels shareable to say like, I swear to God, I told you your house is yeah. not worth what someone, you know what I mean? Like just thinking about what the top line price is on your house isn't the way to think about it. When these are also shared on your blog and then repurposed over to LinkedIn as an article, not a post, an article is very different than a post. When they're shared as an article on LinkedIn, the next thing you want to do, and this is a very helpful thing to do, you can tweet the editors of LinkedIn because they're always looking for good content and to promote. So you tweet LinkedIn and they actually have a, um, let me pull it for you. Mm -mm -mm. All I have to do is look at who I'm following because I'm only following 77 people. LinkedIn editors, at LinkedIn editors on Twitter. And when you tweet them, they're gonna review that content. There's 50 editors that look at it and go, ooh, this is high value. Guess what happens when they promote your content for free? So Suddenly your expertise grows, your authority grows. These are all little, it's all the subtlety of growing this, but it all starts with you getting on that content. Okay, so see there's start a post? Right under that, you see write an article? Articles are more like permanent. Post is what you kind of scroll through the news feed and articles a little bit more like. All, our, all our blogs, everything in country write an article. And then, I, yes, and you can, you can share it here too. But when you write something that's exceptional or you share something that's exceptional, like really powerful, and you know this one's got legs, tweet it to the editors because yeah. the editors are always with, looking. Start with the blog and then post the article, not article, then blog. Right? Correct. See, is micro content the formula for success? That's a published on LinkedIn. Now, you see where it says articles and activity? Okay, so <laughs> there, life in the fast lane. Click on that one. And here I'm talking about Megan. I hope you, and then here's the video of that conversation. So I'm sharing the article in terms of a video. You just have a bunch of these crazy photos, uh, stock photos, if you will. And, and yeah, or like today I want to do a thought provoking one and I don't have anyone any images, I'll just go like this. Mm. <laughs> I prefer you underneath like this. Like yeah, like, right. Yeah. And like that works for us, but if you guys want to stick with a certain color palette, if you want to stick with a certain light and tone look, or like uh, and, and I go look, and I go crazy that. creative with my visuals. I want those visuals to be different. Yeah. Okay, so go back to the in on the top. Yeah. Right. So when you start a post, a post is something that'll show up in somebody's newsfeed. An article is long form. It's going to stay there for a long time, forever. It's in ink, digital ink. I think before we go, I, I think really our conversation is going to stop short today for a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, we've got to get you into that space quickly so that we can start getting the messaging and, the, and the, all the pillars have to start, they can't be generated without that. Mm -hmm. That's a starting point. So I like that a lot. That's, that's strong for me. Making real estate real easy. It opens up. Yeah, you can play with the no headaches as like a separate campaign. Yeah. But then if this is, this is the top level, like that's the, the quick summary. In my mind, like a little handwritten part, like, hey man, yeah, I don't know where you went, but I really want to work with you, it makes me headache free. <laughs> and then they can you imagine and you send it with a career you send it with a career someone that didn't get back to them they were actively engaged with at the end of the month you just send a bundle of those out to yeah them. yeah, yeah. 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 put something in it that's like clearly a placebo whether it's like branded m ms or like tic or whatever the hell yeah it could be empty if that's the point or you could put in a little treat the district aspirin zero you know right and then let them. Oh, like, oh, the prescription for zero hassle uh, yeah. home sales, yeah. zero headache home sales. Yeah. Right. And then maybe when they open it up, there can be a little, like, uh, fortune cookie fortune in there. Need a refill? Ooh, with oh, a with a With a phone cool. number. It's a piece of paper in it. Yeah. Your prescription. Something for... simple, silly, but memorable. Yeah. 
the making real estate real easy for everyone. All I keep picturing is like the little circle coming by, like there's a family, there's an older person, there's a yeah. child, yeah. there's a dog, there's a lady with six cats. Like, yeah. right. you know what I mean? Like, the crazy cat lady. Yeah. Can you imagine yeah. an ad? So, so this is, this is, well, you know how my brain works. Yeah. So imagine an ad where you see the family of five, you see the crazy cat lady, right? So you just see them standing there and the crazy cat lady, you see the, the hoarder, right? You see all these yeah. different segments of the population and then it ends with making real estate really? real easy. Cool. And then the, the, maybe the last thing you see is the crazy cat lady for everyone, yes. right? That's what I think of. Now, yeah. you, There's right. a reality. Yes. But you, yeah. you create, you create, a, you create that. Uh, it's a circle of life, Simba. <laughs> And I, I, I'm going to have Mark Candelaria on my podcast soon, and um, I'd love to have you on. Let, let you get up to speed on this stuff and then have you on. Okay, cool. Because I, I like to talk about how we got to each other, because I think that's kind of a... I, I like when friends connect people. Mm -hmm. And I came in here with zero intent of doing any business with you, because yeah. I didn't. I just was like, hey, I'm going to help you out. Well, let's talk. The, um, I, I, I love being able to share stories like this because I think this is super valuable for not just for you but there are other people out there that struggle with how to do this shit for their business mm -hmm. and sure. you can say it a thousand times and people just don't get it like you got it the moment I said hey you should be doing this this and this now I can't wait to see where you're at three months from now four months yeah. from now with this stuff flowing out because it changes very quickly yeah. when you start putting this stuff out it's it shifts into high gear like that it's crazy how fast. I've lived it. I'm still living it. It's weird. Then you'll write a book. <laughs> You're weird. <laughs> I try. I try.